you're going to learn some self-defense hacks. In self-defense training, these are power hacks to improve the power of your strike, the power of your body if you have to move somebody off of you. So overall, your, your strength, but your ability to move your body with that strength. So to create that power, that power generating force for strikes, but also your ability to strike your target, whether you're using your hand, your elbow, your knee, you need better accuracy. You can have speed, power, balance, all those things are good, but if you can't hit your target, they're worthless. This is also how you can improve accuracy with throwing or with using weapons. You can have weapons in your hand, and if you wanna improve your accuracy, and if you happen to be somebody who does this, you can also improve that accuracy with these drills. So these are just two simple hacks. One is a power hack or a strength hack. The second one, and it's a series of things that you're gonna do, and I'll do them back to back. That's why I wanna show them to you now. The second one's for accuracy, the first one's for power. If you do them back to back, the power exercise is gonna get your heart rate up, it's gonna get the blood pumping, and then when you go into the mental training, the accuracy drill, which creates new uh, neural pathways in your brain, you're going, it's gonna sit in there faster. You're gonna improve yourself so much faster when you learn something new, but you do it under stress, under a little bit of physical stress. So in other words, getting the heart rate up, moving something heavy, which is what we're gonna do in this power drill, this power hack for self-defense. And then you're gonna do the training for the accuracy for hitting the target every single time. And this stuff really, really works. Um, yeah, someone says, I should teach how to hit a baseball with a bow staff. This is gonna be similar to that. This is gonna improve your accuracy with weapons, with throwing weapons. It all started with this idea that if you are um, stranded somewhere and you need to eat and you can't catch the bird because you don't know how to make a snare, you didn't take the class, you don't know how to catch the bunny, you didn't learn how to do a snare, learn how to make a snare, by the way. You pick up a rock and you throw it and you hit it and then you, you have lunch, you have dinner, right? A lot of people can't do that, but I believe that I can. I, I know I can because I've done it before. Um, not when I was super hungry, I wanted to test to make sure I could do it. But the basic idea that you can pick something up, throw with the right hand or the left hand, you have incredible accuracy. It's something, it's a learned skill, it's a developed skill. So improving that accuracy with throwing also improves accuracy, accuracy with striking. It doesn't improve your lifts at night, but striking, hitting with a weapon. And I like to think, you know, if I'm in the grocery store, I don't have any other way to protect my family or my kids. There's some active situation going on. I can keep up, pick up a can. I was gonna say Campbell's soup, but that progressive, they put more stuff in there. That progressive is nice and heavy. And take that and throw it in a way to try to distract enough or make them drop or even knock them out or kill somebody if I have to for self-defense. So these self-defense hacks, first one's for power. Second one is for accuracy. And I, like I said, do them together because when you get the heart rate up from the power exercise, that it's gonna make the second one sink in so much faster. Now, I'm gonna to go to the ground, I'm gonna show you, we gotta change the camera a little bit. The first one for power, for improving, and this is power of um, hitting somebody, power, any kind of technique that you have, whether it's weapon or not, hit him with the knees, hit him with the elbow, palm strike, fist to the face, punch through the throat, elbow to the throat, or simply just moving somebody, getting them off of you, getting them back, you're gonna develop with this drill. Now I'm using a sandbag, and this sandbag has sand in it. And I recommend, because I have both kinds of sandbags, um, I have both uh, fillings. This is sand, and the sand gets wet, gets heavier all the time. I love sand, but it's really heavy for most people I work with. The second thing that I recommend, the thing I recommend the most is going to be um, rubber mulch. Rubber mulch is just chopped up tires. It's bulkier and it's still heavy because of the, usually it has the, uh, you know, that the, they're still belted. So it has metal in it. So it makes it heavy. So rubber mulch is really good. It's dense. Rubber is dense and it makes it nice and heavy, but it also fills out a little bit better. Now this has straps and you can get ones with straps. I put a link below. I put a starter one in there. My favorite is in the corner over there. It's like an amorphous beast. It's this big round bag made by Iron Mind. I'll, I put that link, I've showed you that one before, but you have to really have good grip strength. Not everybody has great grip strength from the start. So get something with straps, that'll be a little bit easier. I've got to drop the camera just a little bit more because I want you to see what I'm going to do. First exercise, I'm going to do these back to back. We're going to do power, accuracy, power, accuracy. First exercise, you're going to start with your bag on the floor, on the deck, and feet wide, turn out like a duck. 
Lift with your legs, push your butt back, stabilize those hips. And you're just going to stand, see how my head is up? Don't do this. Make sure your head is up. You just stand up and down. This is a great starting point if you're not in the best kind of shape that you've ever been. This is easy for you. Then pick it up a little higher, pick it up. And if this is really easy, pick it up, drop it. Pick it up, drop it. Just up and down, reaching for those straps. But if you can do it by grabbing the material, this is what builds, I'm not holding the strap there. If you can hold the actual canvas with your hand, that's best. If you're not there yet, don't worry about it. Make sure your fingernails are trimmed too or it'll rip your fingernails. But grab it, pull it up, drop it over and over. This is more advanced beginner level. Just stand up, down, up, down. That's your first exercise. Don't count reps. We're going up with the camera. But do that for 30 seconds. Now the second one. That in my shirt. It's just a regular tennis ball. Find these anywhere. I think I got these at Target. You buy them in a big bag for like three bucks. You don't need a big bag. Or you go to, um, a lot of times the tennis players, when the ball doesn't have the bounce like it's supposed to, they knock it over the net and then they either throw them away or you can go and pick them up. So go to a tennis court and find one if you, need, if you don't want to buy one, right? But get a basic tennis ball or a lacrosse ball or a soft baseball or a hard baseball, whatever. And the first thing you're going to do is just, it's super simple, I know. But you're gonna throw it up and catch it with two hands. Catch it with two hands. And if you haven't done this in a long time, because you're a little older, or you're not athletic, you maybe you've never been athletic, or you're becoming more athletic, just do that over and over, 30 seconds. That's the first part of your accuracy training. Over and over, that's all I want you to do. Then, 30 seconds, your heart rate's got bad, gone back down. This is also gonna burn massive amount of calories for you. You're going back to the bag. In the second set, I'm gonna heave it up, and I'm gonna curl it in like this. I'll show you what I mean when I bring it back. So you're gonna pick it up off the floor and curl it in into your arms so you're cradling it. If you use the straps, you just pick it up and curl it in and this is a front loaded squat this is going to build wicked strong legs power all the punches all the kicks everything comes off the floor everything comes through your legs you have to have great leg strength so this is a power hack for self-defense specifically you're going to throw your hips back when you do self-defense training you need to have power and one of the ways to hack power to get hack or your power faster you're going to do this and it's nice easy you don't you don't rest up, you don't rest down. This is a continuous motion because we want to keep tension on those legs to make the muscle grow stronger and more explosive for power, for when you need to knock someone's jaw straight off their face for self-defense. So you're going up and down, up and down, 30 seconds. Immediately go to your ball. We want to do these back to back. This is what irons in or concretes in the mental training you're gonna add a clap every time you throw it up clap and catch it if you can clap once clap twice three times every time if you drop it start from one two every time it goes up add another clap what's happening is you're gonna get much faster with your hands. Faster hand speed is great. It's a great self-defense hack. When you do self-defense training, you want fast hands, fast feet, but more importantly, you need that accuracy. You wanna be able to parry, block, do whatever you have to, avoid their punch, all these things. This quickness, this training, the clap alerts the brain. It's hardwiring it in. So it's making you better at uh, not just catching, but getting ready to hit your target straight in making contact, full contact. Um, Steve says, yes, but what about push-ups? Steve, I do hundreds of push-ups a day. I've been in love with push-ups since I was a little kid. I can't get enough. So yeah, do as many push-ups as you can. But I like to do variations. 
That's a great power hack. If we have time, we'll throw that in the end. I'll show you some of the variations I do. But let's talk about another way that I want you to use your, uh, your sandbag. So we did the front loaded squats. We did the lift and pick. This time, you're going to take it up to your chest. And see how I rolled that up to my chest? Before, I got it in my hands. And my palms were facing me. Just like I'm holding a baby. This time, I'm going to roll it up to this. So from here, I'm going to pull it up, and then I'm going to bend my knee and push straight up, and then I'm going to slam it as hard as I can straight through the fore. I'm going to engage the back muscles, getting the whole body in. It's going to get your heart rate up. It's going to lean you out faster. It's going to give you wicked knockout power for self-defense. This is a power hack. When you do self-defense training, you got to get the legs strong, but you got to get the whole body strong. This is the key to old man, old woman strength, by the way. This is the key to that crazy strength that most people don't understand because it comes from here, not just from here. It comes from here. It comes from here, right? It comes from being able to put your whole body together. Your whole body is stronger than any one part or any one group of parts. So if you can learn how to pull it all together, and that's what we're doing now, we're going to get it up to here. We're going to bend the knees. We're going to press a little bit. Since Amos says, spar today with a Division I uh, K1 champion, good. A lot of fun, but you have to work on your speed. Since Amos, I promise you, this will cre create much more uh, quick twitch muscle fibers, the power exercise, and then this stuff, the stuff we're doing now, your hands are going to be so fast. But I, still now, people are surprised. I'm a big guy. I'm an old guy. I still have fast hand speed, fast foot speed. And it's all from stuff like this. These are self-defense hacks. You want to get better at self-defense, do some power hacks, do some accuracy hacks. So we're going to roll it to here, we're going to bend, and we're going to press. So from here, we're up, down a little, slam. The slam, I can't emphasize enough how important that is. That's going to change everything and engage your back muscles, pulling down a little bit of the chest. But from here to here, you're using everything up in the front, mostly in the core here. Boom, you're going to throw it to the back. You're going to get strong all over. You're going to do this for 30 seconds. Then my ball fell out. Just had a baby coming out there. The ball, we did the throwing catch. Now, I want to show you my favorite part with this ball. And I don't know if you can see this black dot. We'll go see it together. There it is. Uh, that, it's about as big as my fingertip. Now, that doesn't matter how big it is. That's just the target right? And let's see, I'm about 25 feet away. My goal is to get as close, and I'm not going to hit it every single time. You're not going to hit it every single time, but you're going to get better. But remember this, you have two hands, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand. You need this, you need the brain to cross over and do all that stuff so that you increase your, or improve your accuracy. If you have a dominant eye, if you've ever, if you've ever done this, especially a lot, you know what uh, shooting is like, you know you have a dominant eye. Most of us know we have a dominant eye or we don't, but if you can help the eyes, one eye, the other eye, we're gonna do that. That's the next exercise after this, but you're just gonna throw first, keep your eyes open. You're gonna throw first, right hand, I'm just aiming at my target. It's gonna bounce and come back, it hit, the, hit the bag. And then I put it in my left hand, Gotta get that thing. I love lifting the, the sandbags and throwing those. But it's gonna go right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand. And every time you're gonna you're gonna see if I if I spend that, I'm gonna spend 30 seconds on it. My accuracy is gonna start to improve the more I do it. Take a deep breath, learn how to calm down, don't slow down, calm your mind. Throwing. Ah, it's getting closer. Getting close. I was throwing the shuriken today with the little kids. We do these suction cup shuriken stars. Shuriken. I say throwing is a martial arts weapon for the same reason I mentioned at the beginning. It can save your life. Pick up a can of beans. You're in the grocery store. There's some active situation coming in. Some bad guys doing horrible stuff. That's all you have. You got to protect your family. You're... You throw that thing and with accuracy. Beam them right in the head. You pick it up again. You throw and you throw. Kind of like that uh, goofy elf movie. The guy's got the snowballs. But you get the point. You fight till it's over, right? Run, hide, fight. Most people know how to run. They know how to hide. But uh, very few people train to fight. But that's what we're doing here. These are self-defense training. 
This is power hacks, accuracy hacks. Do this for 30 seconds, but it's important that you do it after you get that heart rate up from the, the sandbag. So I'm st my accuracy is starting to improve. So I'm going to go back to the uh, sandbag. I want to get the heart rate back up. So it's just 30 seconds, 30 seconds. This whole workout takes like five minutes. You're going to pick this up. You're going to throw it on the right shoulder. And imagine this. I, I, I have people do this all the time in my self-defense courses, especially the ones when we talk about real world self-defense. What happens if something hits the fan? And they're like, yeah, I want to be ready. I want to protect my family. And I'm like, okay, pick that sandbag up and stick it on your shoulder. And they look at me and they groan and they wince and they whine. And I'm like, you're going to leave, leave your wife there? You're going to leave your kids there? You're going to leave the, uh, your buddy there? What's, what do you think this is? This, that's what we're talking about. Pick it up and stick it on your shoulder. I don't care how heavy it is. Get it up there, right? And then get this hand up because you're going to be punching and kicking and fighting and biting and ripping their face off with this other hand until the fight's over. The fight's not over till you win. So you get your loved ones out, right? Don't get me started. People whine about the silliest things. It's, it's temporary. It's 30 seconds on the right shoulder. On the right shoulder, get the left hand up. Just step in, step together, step back, step together. It's sort of like, it's not a pure squat or a lunge. It's like a forward lunge, step together, reverse lunge, step together, forward, together, back together. This is going to help your accuracy too. You do that for 30 seconds on the right side and then drop them, pick up the other person. You go back in, get somebody else. You're going to take them to safety. Step in, step together, step back. This is self-defense training. These are power hacks. This will improve your accuracy. You're just going forward, in, back, in. 30 seconds, drop it, pop out the ball. Oh, I know what we're doing. When you throw with the right, close the left eye. So you just use the right eye. You got that? Whoa, my accuracy just went up. Close the right eye. Use your left eye when you throw with the right. Hey, Vic, it's good to see you. Long time no see. We're throwing with one eye. So you get the drill, right? Whichever hand you throw with that eyes open, you're going to shock yourself at how close you get to your target. Almost every single time, you're going to get closer and closer and closer. You're going to do that for 30 seconds. Then we're going back to your sandbag. And we're almost at my favorite. I got two left. These are some of my favorites for developing power. These are power hacks. This gets your whole body strong. You just imagine. He's in your face. You can shove him off. You can strike the elbows. You can come in and go forward to the two hands, to the head, driving the knee. All of it is stronger because you have more power for, for self-defense with these power hacks. This is self-defense training. You're going to pick up this. And again, if you can grab the material and not use the handles, do that. But if not, start with the handles. Now, I'm going to pick it up and throw it over my right shoulder. When I do that, I'm gonna turn using my hip. And then I'm gonna turn around, pick it up, and throw it over my left shoulder. That's all you're doing. If, you, if yours is too light and it goes flying across the room, just adjust, use your common sense. Common sense is everybody knows that. You know that. So you're gonna pick it up, drive over the right, run, pick it up over the left, over the right, left. You're gonna keep going for 30 seconds. It's getting heavier. Then you go back to the ball. Now, once you throw it up, clap, turn, throw it, throw it up, turn, throw. So you're, you're clapping, you're turning, throw with the right. Clap, turn, throw with the left. To the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. We got one more. Now this is better than boot camp, and it's not, not as hard as boot camp. Because no one's yelling at you but me. And what do I matter, right? You gotta go get the ball. Oh, and if you have a partner, 
This is way, f this is more fun. If you, you love to do this in partner. Um, <sighs> don't hit the block, the patio block with your elbow. Then it won't hurt. <laughs> I've, seen, I, I've done that a million, not a million times, a bunch of times. I like to break like this. I like to break like this. I like to smash the patio blocks. Um, I like to even break like this. It's been a while since I've done that. Lately, I've been breaking coconuts because someone asked me, can you break a coconut with your hand? And I thought you should be able to. And we got nothing but coconuts around here. Uh, you, you have to make sure they're, um, they're ready to be broken. But you have to, they have an outer husk, right? You pull it apart. And it's the same as everything else. I can break a lot of stuff with my hands. I don't know if you guys have uh, seen the river rock breaks. River rocks are my favorite things to break just because they're so hard and dense. But there's a technique behind all of it. Patio blocks, most patio blocks, if you take the regular like paver blocks, like the long ones are about an inch to an inch and a quarter, and it's like this, you, you, you'll hit. The funny bone is in here. If you hit like this, you're gonna hurt that. Most people break like this, you're not gonna hurt that. You just have to make sure that when you hit it, you're coming down square. You're asking about breaking patio blocks. Hitting the square. If you come down like this, you're on the tip, they can break off the tip. If you hit like this, which I've seen, I've seen some of the worst breaks. I've had some of, in, in some of my tests and the worst breaks with my kids. Not kids, like little kids, adults, just younger than me. And um, they overshoot when they're, and they're, they're usually hitting with a fist. And then they hit this and you hear ping, that's the bone breaking. Or ping, ping, and it's both bones breaking. And, it's, and what happens is they go, they close their eyes. And it's the fear, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's in the block. Of course it's gonna hurt. And so um, it's practice, practice, practice. For a, a thousand times in a row. And see how I did that? This is how most people are gonna break like this. That makes it so much stronger, right? And then you have to drop your body at the same time. But almost all of breaking is up here. It's 90% the the, physical. But that 10% mental, getting focus in your mind, being able to have that empty mind, that mushim, that clear mind, right before you hit it, that's the hard part. Because your, your mind, no matter what you do, you're hitting a block, right? So your brain doesn't, your, your, your body's like, don't do that. <laughs> doesn't make any sense. But it's usually nine pounds of pressure. Can you generate nine pounds of pressure with your hand? You can. But what part of your hand? Did you toughen it up? What have you hit for the last six months to develop more callus, uh, more dense bone. The bone marrow actually changes on the inside of the bone when you break stuff. All right, final exercise. We threw it over, we threw it over, and I showed you how to throw it up, throw your claps, turn, and then immediately upon turning, fire your ball to the right, throw it up, throw, you add a couple claps in, turn, and immediately fire with your left. We've got one or more of those. Put it back in there. Um, yeah, and, and a, lot of, a lot of guys too, if you watch like a lot of the big guys that break ice and other things, there's, you have to understand it has to be supported on the very, very tips. And then gravity is pulling everything else. And every, every material breaks differently. Uh, wood bends and then it, it actually, the fibers separate, but uh, brick and rock generally, they have to, you have to hit it in a way that they vibrate so fast that those pieces separate and the, the, the bond of cement, the glue of cement actually snaps apart. Or if it's in the case of the rock, whatever, you know, the rock, it, it breaks. So, and a lot of times a rock, you're using a hard surface and you're, you're actually elevating one end of it. And the same thing with like a, like a, a, a building br brick, like a, one of those red bricks, right? Where you've seen guys chop the top off or they chop it down. Usually they're hitting it against a hard surface and it's breaking. If they're hitting it like this, there's usually two and one's hitting against the other one. There's a lot of technique that's involved, which uses principles of not just physics, but like mechanics, right? Uh, mechanical engineering. So if you understand what's actually happening, you realize it's, it's, you still have to have a lot of mental focus. And you have to have a lot of will to hit something so hard like that. But you also have to be able to prepare your hand. I don't have anything I can hit without breaking it. But so that you can hit so hard, you don't break your hand or your elbow or whatever. All right, back to this one. We're gonna pick it up like you're picking this guy up and you told him back up, don't get any closer to my kids. 
and you're going to shove. Sounds like glass or ringing a grinding stone. Yes, it does. All right, good point. So you're gonna pick this up straight to your chest and I want you to step and shove. Throw that guy as far as you can, move around, pick him up again, step in with the right, when you go back, pick him up, step in with the left and explode through that sandbag throw to build power. These are power hacks for self-defense and accuracy hacks. Last one, because I'm late, I gotta go. You're gonna do the same as you did before, throwing it up, clapping. When you turn, tell yourself, this is my right hand. I gotta close my left eye. So I'm only seeing it through the right eye. And bam, throw it, snap, left eye. Not even close. Throw it up, right eye. Over and over. Got sweat in my eye. Over and over and over again. Uh, not just pick up and throw, but you have to, when you throw them with the right, use your right eye. When you throw them with the left, use your left eye. I don't know I got my left eye, but it's stinging. Anyway, those are basic things that you can do. Um, Sarah, good to see you. Sarah, we're talking about power hacks. How do you get stronger for self-defense? Self-defense training, you need to have power. Self-defense training, your technique has to hit. Elbows, knees, punches, head butts, if you're throwing a weapon, whatever it is. So use the tennis ball, and I'll review real quick. First exercise, first exercise with the tennis ball, which is throwing up and catching. Do that for 30 seconds. And then you're gonna lift that sandbag just off the ground. If you can, bring it all the way up, drop it, up, drop it. You're gonna do that for 30 seconds. Immediately go to the ball where you throw it up, Add a clap, one clap. And then if you can do one, do two. Do two, do three, you're going for speed of hands. Trust me, it's kind of hard, even with a, especially with a low ceiling. See how many you can do. If you get to four and then you drop it or you can't catch it at four, go back to one. Build back up. Week after week, your hands are gonna get faster, faster, faster. That's gonna translate into faster hand speed for self-defense. And then go back to the bag. Second exercise, you're gonna do front-loaded squat. That means you're gonna pick this thing up, roll it into the front of your body, and then front squats. I finally weighed this the other day. It's 101 pounds in so many ounces. Throw it down, put it, the ball out, and then you're gonna throw right hand, left hand. Don't worry about closing your eyes. Both eyes are open on this one. There's a dot back there. I don't know if you can see it between the two bags on the wall, it's just a little dot I put on there with a marker. And just throw right, throw left. And I know what you're saying, I can't throw with my left hand, you can't throw yet. Can't throw with my right hand, you can't throw yet. But you will, I want you to be ambidextrous. They chop off your arm if you get it broken or you're holding the, 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 the love of your life, whether it's your children or your family or your, your spouse, you're, you're, you're carrying them out and you gotta hit that guy, you gotta pick up a can of, uh, Campbell's beans and bean that guy in the back of his head because he's screaming he's he's trying to get people in there and you smash him in the back of the head with it you have to be able to do that oh hey Jeremiah good to see you so one hand the other hand one hand the other hand. then go back to the bag this time you're gonna roll it up to the chest palms facing out squat and press slam as hard as you can you're trying to break the floor you're like the Hulk, fighting that Thanos dude. I don't know if he did that, but imagine that maybe that's what he did. Because he's a big guy, right? He's the Hulk smash. All right, then you're going, throwing with the right eye open, the right hand, left eye, and you'll see your accuracy is gonna explode through the roof right on that one. And then right hand, right eye, left hand, left hand, left eye. What, what's gonna happen is your brain is going to start to do this. It's gonna bring everything into a center line and you're gonna do it without thinking. If you want to, those guys that kick in doors for a living, tut, 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 and they, wherever their body goes and they hit their target like this and they have to have incredible accuracy, this is stuff that they do. Oh, uh, the bag weighs 20 pounds less than you do. You, it's what you put in it. Mine is full of sand and the sand's been in there forever. It gets wetter and wetter, it gets heavier and heavier. 
go for rubber mulch and then put in 10 pounds at a time, 20 pounds, 30 pounds. And when you, and start light and put the, or put rags, stuff rags in there. It doesn't have to be heavy. It has to be heavy for you. It doesn't have to be heavy for me. So do that. The next one, and I just busted open the sand, making sand everywhere. You're gonna pick it up. You're gonna throw it right shoulder, left shoulder. When you go over the right shoulder, I have a class here early in the morning. I don't wanna have to vacuum the whole floor again. But you're gonna go over the right shoulder, turn and lift, and then turn around, grab it, pick it up, go over the left shoulder for 30 seconds. Time. Don't worry about weight rep or reps. It's time. Time under tension. Especially as you get older, if you want to build real power, not just muscle size. It's like if you have big looking muscles, what can they do? This, that's the secret behind bodybuilders. Bodybuilders do high reps at low weight to build big muscle. Power lifters do super heavy weight at low reps. Um, what we're looking for is something in the middle. We want real knockout power. I want self, I want self defense technique power, right? And that is time under tension. So it doesn't matter so much how heavy. Um, yeah, do you want tone and strength? Time under tension, 30 seconds. 30 second sets. And we're doing power accuracy, power accuracy. Because this gets the heart rate up, the power. <sighs> then you're breathing heavy. The blood, your brain has, is just firing. All that good plasma, all that oxygen in your brain from all this hard work. And then you're doing this kind of stuff and you're throwing, your accuracy is going through the roof. Now, Almost second to last drill, you're gonna throw it up, double clap, turn, right, both eyes open, right hand, throw it up, clap, turn, left hand, pick up the bag. Oh, you're gonna pick it up and shove. Pick it up, so you're using the whole body. Pick this guy up. Get him out of here, right? Or maybe it's a loved one, you're trying to get him through the window of the building that's falling, right? I mean, God forbid, horrible stuff. But you're throwing, and then you run over, pick it up, throw it back. Last exercise with the ball. Similar to the last one, you throw it up, clap, clap a few times. And when you turn, you're gonna throw the right hand, so you have to tell yourself, right eye, right hand. Throw it up, turn. Left hand, left eye. Your accuracy goes up every time you close an eye. And then the next time you do your weapons work, or you do throwing, if you like to throw knives, hatchets, um, axes, as they call them, or uh, shuriken. I'm going to teach you guys how to show, throw shurikens and knives. That's coming up this summer. I'm working on it now. I'm trying to get this set up because I don't want to stick holes in the wall. I've done that before, but I, I got to get my accuracy down. Right? I'm not going to show you if I can't do it. It's, and it's been a while. I used to be super. It used to be the funnest thing that I did. Hit the same spot every time. I'm getting there though. But I'm gonna show you how to do that same thing in a very short period of time. I don't want you to spend a lifetime doing it. So uh, throwing, and then um, Anthony, it's 7:46 here where we are. All right, you guys have been awesome. Those are all the drills that I have for tonight. Power hacks for speed. Power hack or power hacks for accuracy. Accuracy hacks. <laughs> Self defense training. Accuracy hacks and power hacks. Power is when you have strength and um, force combined. It's that explosiveness. It's not just like lip chest press, but it's like, how can you move somebody off of you? How can you hit somebody and knock them out? That's, that's the kind of stuff that we're working on now. That's what develops that super, super strength, that, the power. All right. Thanks, Kachu. I'll see you guys in a little bit. I got to kick out home. We'll do some more of these tomorrow. Thank you.